I was doing the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm on a mission to learn something from everyone, and today I'm here with Jimmy Barf Betty from Scooped Up Learning More, episode 78 from everyone. My man, thanks for coming through. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. It is Barbetti. Am I saying that right? Yeah, Barbetti. It's Hell Italian, yes, you know what I'm saying? Barbetti <laughs> spaghetti. Hell yeah. It's very rare that I get a last name right, so I like to celebrate when I do, and of course, my last name is so hard to pronounce uh, that it's nice to get someone else's right. Uh, how, do you, how do you pronounce your last name? Jones Torregrosa. Oh, that's not too bad. It's, it's just, not. It's just a lot of letters when people see it written, so I think they get real overwhelmed. Just, yeah, it's stumble, and they see the T, and then a bunch. It just becomes gibberish. So uh, I got my little, your signature is probably real long, then. Just you, JT. Oh, yeah, okay. I, so I, you walk got... <laughs> <laughs> I joke on, like, the SATs. Like, as a kid, the standardized tests were a nightmare, mm -hmm. but since then, it's all been JT. I'm just, yeah, making life easy for myself and everyone else. Uh, I got my little cheat sheet here, because I know Scooped Up has some shows coming up, and I'm bad with dates. Uh, so September 21st, we have a Milford House show, 928, the Stores House show, uh, 1012, Glassboro Skate Park, and 1019. Milford Skate Park show. Correct. Bunch of stuff. Uh, the newest album called The Runs Out Now, which is an A plus album name. <laughs> Thank <laughs> I, you. I like the promo campaign of like, yeah, do you have the runs yet? Oh, beautiful. A little cut in the infomercial. Yeah, there you we'll go. figure it out. The glare's there, but whatever. <laughs> Hell yes. It's the idea that counts there. Uh, I feel like I wanted to get you guys on here because every band talks about doing it for fun and like ha doing it only for fun and just having all the fun with it. And I feel like you guys are the only ones who meet it. <laughs> Where I no, we're all... doing it for money, buddy. <laughs> but we don't, we're not doing it for fun. We're doing it for money. No, I'm just kidding. No, but yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, 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 could, I could agree with that. Yeah, we're definitely in it for the fun. It's a lot of fun. It shows so. through in everything. And like, I sit down here all the time with bands and yeah, myself included. It's like, I only want to do it for fun. And then I get, and it's like, it's 3 a.m. and I'm still editing. And it's like, fuck, this isn't really fun right now. This is work at this moment in time. And it feels like for you guys, everything, the promo, the album release, the behind the scenes content, like every piece of it feels like it's just for fun for the homies and for the hangs. Yeah. No, I have a lot of fun doing this shit. I feel like crap if I don't get anything like done creatively. Okay. And so like the band offers a ton of creative elements that I can, you know, do it on a daily basis, you know? Yes. And kind of feel fulfilled in that, in that sense. Cause like, uh, I start, my whole background is in art. Okay. Uh, so like I started off just doing art and drawing and painting and shit. So then when I got into music, it was just like another form of art that I could explore and yep. kind of just like, you know, get the same feeling that I would get out of painting a whole mural, but just in two seconds after writing a cool riff. And I was like, oh, music is sick. And, you know, I started doing that. And are we talking like painting or graffiti? Graffiti. Okay. Um, but yeah, painting too. Like, okay. like I did, uh, I used to do canvases and shit too, but like, yeah. So, uh, so I have a big uh, background in graffiti art and that's kind of like where the, like the sticker art and a lot of like our oh, artwork yes. comes from is that that background that I had painting because uh, I, I was painting probably for like I don't know like eight years before I even picked up a guitar interesting and started From the band. what ages uh like 16 to whatever eight years plus 16 yeah, 24 and, dude, I don't know math <laughs> no no yeah okay so it was less than that so right when I was 21 I picked up the, the guitar and started That's late as fuck. yeah yeah damn yeah so I was never a musician like growing up I was uh I played the piano a little bit yep um, like I took piano lessons. I, I, like I have the worst AD, ADD. So back then when I was a kid, I had even worse. So like yeah. going to piano lessons, I wouldn't really pick up anything. So anyway, I did that for a little bit. I did drum lessons again. Like when I would go to the lessons, I wouldn't learn shit cause I'd yeah. go back and just like forget it all or whatever. Um, so like being a musician just never seemed like it was in the cards for me. I was just like more into art and like videography and photography and just like just creating shit. And like, I was fully into, graf into uh, graffiti art. And like, that's what I was like trying to do is like be like a like a known artist like known for being an artist mm -hmm. which was very far-fetched so is being in a band but but <laughs> it's like all, yeah when i started making music i was like all right well if i'm gonna i gotta choose like i can make art when i'm 40 it doesn't really matter no one yeah. really cares how old you are when you're making art yep. but if you're making music and you're trying to like actually do something with it you got to start young it's a young man's you know game. what i mean even Absolutely. if you don't make it when you're young you gotta at least be young get in in the beginning. There's only so many house shows you can play, and I don't think you can do them after 40 anymore. Yeah, like, like say, say I wait till 40, and like, oh, now I want to start a band. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It would just be like, it, it would just be a completely different band, yeah. and it would just be more and more far-fetched and just different to for the goals that kind of we have, like, like in the beginning, we never even had big goals, but now, like, they've set themselves up, and the sure. bar is raised, and now the goals we have, like, wouldn't it be possible if I did, wasn't young still, you know what I mean? Uh, 100%. And um, I don't know, I'm just going on a tangent now. No, but. I appreciate it. I laugh. Uh, I work with, so yeah, I do a lot of music videos we were talking about. I also work with a production company that does like the fall and spring concerts for colleges. So I'm at a lot of colleges. Uh, and similarly, I've had the thought of like, oh, this is a young man's game. Like when I was 21, like going and embedding myself in a college crowd and partying with them for footage, like that was cool. Now at 28, it's like, a little bit younger than I am now. It's like by 45, I can't be partying with college kids to make a living. Like, it's yeah. got to grow out of this. No, yeah, exactly. And um, so, I mean, like, I was 21 when I started, but luckily I had, like, this background in videography and photography and, and art that, like, 
right when I was making music, we were making music videos too, like for the demos mm-hmm. that we first made. Which is so smart. You're right. That, like <laughs> that, that cross pollination there is so important. Like the visual side of music is so important. And I think so many bands get caught up in like trying to make the, the you know, the number one hit yeah. of their first song. It's like, that isn't it. And even if you were making the number one hit, it only matters if there is something else to go with it. Where a marketable yeah, song yeah. requires so many more pieces of marketing than just yeah, the three minute song that goes to exist. And it was crazy because there's so much uh, focus on that nowadays, like with musicians being like, oh, well, now I have to become like a, a social media guru mm-hmm. too. I got to be a graphic designer and an artist yep. and all that shit. And it's like, I was already that to begin with. So now it's like, that's all I've been doing from the beginning. And so like we've we've had like a good image and a good social media presence and mm-hmm. We've had all these stupid videos, you know, for years. Before it was like, before there was all these music marketing gurus being like, go and make TikToks, do this, blah, blah. Like we were doing all that shit already. And all the guerrilla marketing too that I do. Like I give out, like I go to mad shows and I give out these stickers to everyone that leaves. We've given out like 100,000 like in the past couple of years. So I, that shit adds up. I watched part of, uh, you guys did a podcast not too long ago with a group of three guys and you're all at the big table and you're talking about the stickers. Mm-hmm. And it made me so happy because when I am, uh, what was the name of that podcast, by the way? Let me, uh, that was, uh, sorry to put you on the spot. Listen here. Up Long Island. Listen Up Long Island. Shout out to them because, yeah, it was a cool thing. I saw some of it and it was dope. Uh, the reason I love the stickers is because that's how I think I grew my business as well was business cards. And you're right that at the, the meta now of growing your band is all TikTok. It's all get on there. Mm-hmm. Be active on stories. Put a ton of posts up. Put them on blah, blah, blah. Which works and is easy, but like you got to hit it at every angle. Yes. And you got to think of what people used to do before there was even the internet. And it, sh- it worked for everyone before then, you know? 100%. And I think flyers it's flyers and stickers. Business cards are good, but like how many business cards do you end up like really keeping and looking at and calling the number or whatever? Like not a lot. So that's why we, we stick with stickers. I was talking to a friend about this the other day. Uh, he was giving out like QR codes and shit. Mm-hmm. And like how many, like when you leave a show, someone gives you a QR code. How many times are you actually scanning that or doing anything yeah. with it? Yeah. Like, most of the time, even when someone gives you a sticker, how many how many times are you looking the sticker up? Usually never. Yep. But with the sticker, you you keep it and you stick it up somewhere. You eventually you keep seeing it, and then maybe you see our name opening for some band you like, and then it's like it all clicks at that point. Yep. So right now we have a hundred thousand people waiting to to absolutely yeah. to, for it to click. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? And like a couple of them have, or a lot of them actually. Every time I go and I do, like I actually just went to Punk and Drublick in uh, in Mass, which is No Effects is like big. Uh, festival and okay. they're also like retiring so it was one of their last shows Damn. so there was i don't know how many people but a couple thousand people there i gave out like two thousand stickers to yep. everyone leaving and i got like a message from somebody that like reached out and was like oh someone gave me this sticker saying this is gonna be my new favorite band and they were fucking right and blah blah like uh, and i was like oh so right there it shows that it works like yep. i've gotten emails from someone like uh like a couple weeks ago we i went to like a avril lavigne show or i think it was one of the i think it was a green day show i went to and i passed out the stickers got an email from someone that's like i don't have social media but this band is like my favorite band right now and blah blah and i'm like yo it is it's working you know absolutely and you're right that like the the problem with tiktok is like it might hit someone in wisconsin and that's great but that doesn't necessarily help scooped up when you have a house show in connecticut coming yeah, up yeah my thing with the business cards was a similar thing to your point of like you might throw this business card away. That's fine with me. What I did is I got to say hi to you. I introduced myself to you, which mm-hmm. for me as a beginning person was huge. Where like when I'm still in the full like imposter syndrome, don't feel like a photo person to go say hi. I am a photographer is a huge step for me. Well, you know, for a photographer, it's different. Like a band giving a business card, yeah, you're gonna, it's gonna get thrown away. Sure. When someone's like, oh, yo, I'm the photographer that you saw today, like at this event. Here's my mm-hmm. business card if you want to link up. That you you make a connection in your mind with that. And of course, there's and, a photo printed on the other side. Yeah, like, so that definitely worked for you. I could see that 100 yes. percent working really well for you. The other piece of this that I think is the more important is like you're right if I was handing a thousand business cards probably one percent of them mattered like right it was a big number what I do think mattered is when uh so I was at Webster the Palladium like the local kind of metal venues was my my home at the time and it's like for those people who are there and I'm at the Webster four times a week at this point in my life like I'm just going to any show with my camera that I can get permission to Mm -hmm. and it's like if every time you're at the Webster some guy comes up to you and says hi I'm the photographer by the 10th time you're like who the fuck is this guy yeah yeah, yeah. so to me it was like the longevity of it like you can throw this business card away now that's fine by the seventh one, you're going to look me up. No, that's the same with the stickers. You know, like every time I go, like, so like I don't only hit CT shows. I go yep. to New York and Mass and Jersey and wherever like w- is in like a three hour radius. Yep. I'll go and go to all the big shows and pass out these stickers. Yep. And now that I've been doing it for years, like every, like one in every three people or one in every four people will be like, oh, I've gotten this sticker. Yep. And then I'll be like, well, now you have to listen to the album or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. or, or they're already a fan or people are like, oh, Scooped yeah. Up. I love Scooped Up. And like now it's literally, it's growing and and it's prove yep. it's proving itself too with our shows. Yep. You know? There's also evidence of your work ethic. I think is the other key there is like there are a lot of bands like we're on the grind 
And like, that doesn't mean anything. We don't know what that looks like. Right. And I know Mm -hmm. that producing an album is a grind, but I don't see that grind. I don't know what you guys went through to make the album. I don't know how hard it was to get the, whatever the mix, right. All the rounds revisions. Like I don't see that shit. What I do see is this guy who's at every show promoting his band. And it's Mm -hmm. like, what the fuck? Like he is, that or, is the grind. Or the videos I was putting out every day. So like when that album was coming out, the album we just dropped, the runs, I brought you a copy, by the way, you could Thank have this you. CD. Hell yes, dude. I love the album art. We'll get there in a minute. But yeah, yes. we also got these, uh, well, uh, we also got these baseball cards. I gave you uh, a yes. pack of those. Thank then, you. dude. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what the fuck was I saying? Anyway, so uh, <laughs> when uh, we were making this album, what was I saying? Shit. Uh, making the album, handing out business cards. Uh, you're going to three hour radius, uh, the repeat clients of people. So you'd see them the 10th time and then they check the thing out. Um, nah, dude, it's gone. I don't remember. That's okay. That's what it do- that's <laughs> what happens down here. It just sucks thoughts out of our brain. I didn't sometimes. even started smoking yet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, the album. Uh, dude, what the fuck was I about to say? Um, Some of the album art, producing all the rounds or revisions that go into it. They don't see that. They just see that the the grind. Oh, so I was making these videos every day, like yeah. leading up to the album. That's what I was gonna say. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was making these little pieces of content, Select. literally for like a month straight before the album came out, and a month straight after it came out. And like every day I didn't have the idea, I would wake up and be like, ah, I got to come up with a stupid, funny (laughs) video. And those resulted in the funniest things because I wouldn't have like made each one if I didn't give myself that task to make a video every day for that month or whatever. And like that right there shows the, you know, the drive that we had besides all the stuff we're doing behind the scenes that you don't see. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Seeing someone post a video every single day about this thing that's coming out, it's like, oh, maybe maybe it's important or maybe there's a lot of work put into this. You know, maybe I should listen to it. Yes. And the people did. They showed up and like, Especially our album release show. Our album release show was insane. Um, I was like, last time we played Cafe 9, we had like 60 people there. And I was like, if we get 80 people, I'll be stoked. Mm-hmm. We had 200 people there Damn. throughout the whole night. And That's like, in New Haven, right? Right downtown yeah. New Haven? I've been there, and 200 sounds like it would be crazy. Well, the capacity there. is 130. <laughs> so th- throughout the whole night, it was at capacity, and people would leave, and then people would show up. So there was 200 people that came in and out. Unbelievable. Good for you guys. That rules. Yeah, it was amazing. And uh, we like didn't expect that, but it was like, holy shit, all of our work that we've been putting in yeah. is finally actually paying off and working out. Yep. And like... You would think maybe it would just kind of be like a flash in the pan type of thing. Like, oh, they released their album. Here's their album release show. It was awesome. And like maybe the other shows after that would be also pretty cool too. But it's literally continued. Like we've been selling out every local show since then. Hell yeah. And it's been almost a year. And it seems like we're just on the up and up. And now I'm just like so mo- so much more stoked to do all this shit mm-hmm. and promote it. Because now I know that like, like I-, I knew it was a good album when I was writing it and we- before we put it out. But now like seeing the reception and everyone going to the, to the shows and singing all the songs like... I really know it's a good album. So like when I go and give out these stickers and I'm at like a punk show, I know all these people, if they listen to this album and if they're into pop punk, they're going to like it. Yep. And like, it feels so good to have a product that like, like that now. Yeah. Cause I've been doing this for years and years and years without it. Like before we even had any music out, yep. I was giving out just like CDs with three songs that I burned onto a CD and just giving those out for free. And they're shitty demos that like, you know, aren't good by any means, but whoever like got those demos would see the potential and be like, Oh, sure. this is cool. I'm into this. I'm going to like, I'm going to follow. But now we finally have like the thing that yeah. like, it's all been leading up to. And it just feels so good to, to promote it because yeah. I know it's a good product or whatever. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like if I was just like hired to promote this, I'd be stoked, I guess. I don't know what That's I'm saying. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, no, that rules. I think it's also so rare where I think the normal trend is you like, by the time the album is ready to come out, you're already thinking about the next album. You're already kind of on to the next set of mixes, a set of demos. Like your brain has already kind of been like, ah, fuck this thing. And you you have to be like, no, I love this thing. But it's cool now mm-hmm. that, yeah, you're almost a year after and you're still like, no, I love this thing. <laughs> Which yeah. I guess presents a new problem as you have to look ahead and write album number two. Uh, but yeah, yeah well, I mean, it, it takes a lot to put out an album. And I've watched people do it. I watched people put out albums and it not really do much. Sure. Even if it's like a really good record i love all the songs on it but it doesn't like i'm talking like like local bands and stuff mm-hmm. um they'll put out an album and like it you know doesn't do the numbers that they were expecting or that you know that th- that you would want of but course. like the record rips and it's like what did they do that clearly wasn't enough i need to do a million times that yep. and even if that's not enough you know what i mean it, it shows how much it really takes yep and i i think going back to the business card example it was to these, your exact points like at the time, at the time, I think in hindsight, business cards were a very good strategy for me. At the time, I didn't know that. At the time, it was like, I just need to do something to continue this train in motion. Like, give me hope. And it's like, I don't know if this is the best step, but it's the best mm-hmm. one that I can see right now. So I'll take it. Yeah. And I think a lot of bands get caught in that moment of like, well, no, let's wait for the perfect. And it's like, no, 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 you're right. It's wake up every day for 30 days and be like, I don't have an idea for promoting the album today, but <laughs> I'm going to find one in the next six I'm hours. Gonna, yeah, yeah, exactly. No. And, uh. Yeah, like you can't wait around for things to just happen. You got to yep. go and fucking make it happen. Yep. And it, it, it might not always look 
you know, so cut and paste, like how it should look or whatever, like, yep. but just giving out stickers is one way of making it happen. You know yep. what I mean? Even if it doesn't seem like it's doing anything over time, it is, or, you know, yep. whatever, whatever it could be, even yep. if you're, if you're just at editing your website or just doing a little thing every day towards your goal, it doesn't yep. even have to be music or a band. It could be anything that you're like really determined to do. As long as you're doing one little piece that's like bettering that mm -hmm. you'll always get closer and closer to your goal, which will, you know, eventually just, you just have to fucking keep trying. Yes. And I'm like, we're proof in the pudding kind of like, with the, the way that this album, like, was received for us being, like, a local band is, like, so sick. Yeah. And, like, we're still, like, we're unsigned. People would look at us from the outside and think that there's, like, a label putting out this stuff because, of, like... You guys are your own label, correct? Yeah, literally, yeah, <laughs> yes. pretty much. So, like, I tried to do that. Like, I looked at other li uh, smaller labels and what they were putting out. Like, there was a bunch of records that came out. Like, Koyo put out a record and, like, all these other bands. So I was, like... Uh, focusing on what like pure noise records would do with a band when they put it out. And I did everything that they do, you know mm -hmm. I mean? Make like a little uh, video for YouTube for all the songs and like uh, yep. the packaging for, or the, the promos for like the record yep. and all the merch and stuff. You know, I modeled it after all that shit to make it look like we're signed or whatever. And people would take us that much more serious, mm -hmm. but we get to keep hundred percent of our royalties. So I don't know. Does the it's label out. like <laughs> put out any other band's music, or is the label exclusive to Scooped Up right now? Oh yeah, it's just it's not even a label really. It's just okay. I'm, I'm like I ended up just making a uh, an account yep. for Orifice Records. Yep. We we've just called our record label Orifice Records since the beginning because we've never had been signed. Sure. And then for this record, I try to make it more of like a thing, just because yep. we're putting out a vinyl and Beautiful. it's on it's on the vinyl. It's Orifice Records 01, like the first Orifice Records record or whatever. Hell yes. Um, we have no plans to sign any other bands because we don't have money. Sure. To, you know what I mean? But you've got the machine built. It was yeah. Just, I think the more valuable part of there of like, yeah, the money comes once the machine is built. And now that you've got this this engine that can produce Scooped Up, it's like uh, Scooped Up is great. And I bet that the machine is so powerful that you could put someone else who's not as good as Scooped Up in and still get good results out of it. Yeah. And of course, yeah, it takes a good band to get the best results out of it. But like, mm -hmm. it seems like, yeah. Down the like line, that's what we could do is we could yeah. turn it into a, rec a real record label. Right now, I kind of just use it as like my pro promotion Yep. the face of my of our shows in a way like mm -hmm. I just throw Orifice Records in the corner of all of our flyers or most of them just so it seems like they're being organized by somebody and it's us yes. you know so that's so smart it is 100% I mean it's the fake it till you make it model right it's the classic kind of shitty term for it yeah. but I think it is right no it is like, yeah no you have to fake it till you make it and like like I said like when we put out our first demos we made music videos for them that yep. was like 100% us faking it yes. you know what I mean making it seem like we're a bigger deal than we really were Yep. because there's bands that like that had actual produced songs that they recorded and whatever that I know that don't even make music videos mm -hmm. and then like didn't put that into their, yeah. into their songs. And so like, it didn't get like the reception that it deserved, you know, I'm always telling people to make music videos. And I think it sometimes comes off as like, uh, I'm telling them to hire me and it's like, I am, it's great. I would love to be hired, but like genuinely I'm saying like, just make more content. Like it doesn't have to be through me. It can be, yeah. Wake yeah. you up as simple as wake you up and figure it out yourself. <laughs> and like, I think, yeah. In the context of our iPhones, we all have more than enough to produce the things. And it's like the bar for music video doesn't have to be sky high, right? It can be more accessible. It can be more simple. Mm -hmm. It can be more DIY. And like, yeah. I, I prefer the projects that are more polished and complicated, but like, it doesn't have to be that. And I'm yeah. putting myself out of business if I sell this too well to other people. But like, it is truly like, yes, go make something. Because even a bad video is better than no video. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, I mean, it brings your song to life. Even yeah. even just fan-made videos I've seen that yep. have like gone viral just because it like captured like the vibe of the song or whatever yep. in like a great way. And, yep. <clears throat> you know, just bringing a visual to the song just brings it all to life more than you could in your head or whatever. Yes. And like so a lot of songs will even paint pictures in your head, but then like a video can you know, paint a whole nother picture. And I love, that's what I like too. Uh, I started this by saying that you guys have more fun than everyone. And as I was watching the videos, uh, the one that we talked about earlier was best days that I wrote down here uh, where, yes, yeah, so you guys are in the back of like a, a converted van. So you guys are yeah, playing in the back of a van, which is kind of common or not common, but like we've seen that idea. What I yeah, love yeah, is yeah. that you polish it up with like, uh, you tie like a rope to the steering wheel. It's an attached to your, gets the head of your guitar. Yeah. So, like, no one's driving. It's yeah. us. So at the, so at the video, it. there's this narrative, like the rope being pulled, the hair steel. And it like, it adds so much to like the fun vibe of it of like, Oh, we're not just in the van, this whole thing. And it's like, that's not a million dollar invested to make that happen. That is a 99 cent thing of rope. It's a creativity that took. Yeah. We didn't happen. spend no, no money on that actually, except for, uh, just the camera that was used. Yep. 
And, uh, but like I invested in that like year, a year or two before. Yeah. So like, yeah. And it's so fun and it does, you're right. It brings and a lot of weed was life. smoked actually. <laughs> Most of the money was put, put into the weed. Yeah. Cause like, well, cause I have all my friends helping me and I just smoke them up or whatever, or I'll give them some weed if they like, you know, really put in some hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's a real low budget operation yeah. every time. Yeah. I was um, impressed by how many people you got involved in all these projects where it seems like there is a huge cast of extras that are eager to help you guys out, which I think those are a- all just my friends like that I know from the skate park or it's from beautiful. just yeah. like smoking weed or whatever. <laughs> so like if I know someone who's kind of interesting, I'll be like, yeah, you could, you could fit this part, mm-hmm. you know, in the this scene in this video. And I'll use people multiple times too, like our pizza guy, yep. my buddy Abdul plays the pizza guy in like all of our videos <laughs> and stuff. Cause he was a pizza guy when he first did it. Oh, it's perfect. So he had the bag and everything. And, and then, uh, and he still has the bag, the pizza bag. So <laughs> he's kind of just been able to uh, reprise that role every time, which is funny. <laughs> Shout out, Abdul. He spent years working at Domino's, getting ready for the scoop. Yeah, yeah, guys. pretty much. Not Domino's, some other pizza, like a, a better pizza place than sure. that. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, dude. Domino's is my king. I don't know. I meant that as a flattery. Domino's is not sponsoring this podcast. <laughs> they should be. But they should be. They should be. That, that's what I know I'm making. They should be Domino's sponsoring my them. tummy, dog. <laughs> I would wish they would. <laughs> I would save a lot of money with a Domino's spot. Pizza there. for life. I'd be lit. Um, I'd be dead. Uh, they rule. Yeah. So you talk about that. You you're the one directing, like editing all the videos. Uh, for something like the best days video, is that like how premeditated is that? Like, is that the the same thing of wake up day? I'll be like, oh, we have a video today. What should it be? Or is that months of like, so I want to build us in a van. What do we do in the van to make it fun? Like, yeah. How yeah. Does it, that was, it was it was planned out for sure because we knew that we had to take spend a whole day in the van filming yeah. all the of us playing and shit. When I bought the van, I thought of the idea. I was like, well, we have to make a video where we <laughs> play in the van. Cause yep. I mean, why not? And then, um, as I was doing it, it came together, I guess, like all the extra little scenes, like all the narrative stuff was kind of like thought of, like I had a list of things that would be cool. Mm-hmm. And then we tried to just knock out what we could get. Like, yep. I remember the dog, like trying to get the dog peeing on the fire hydrant. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't think he even peed on the fire hydrant. So like my idea was him peeing on the fire hydrant and then like chasing the uh, the van. Yep. But all we can get was just him sitting next to the fire hydrant and then chasing the van. Uh, sure. But that was still like a, a hard sh- thing to shoot. I'd have my buddy Kyle like yep. sitting in the back of the van with the door open and like calling the dog's name and then having him chase the van. Yeah. But you know it worked out. So stuff like that. Like I just had a list of things that would be cool to happen in the world around the van, and then we would we. So the first day. So yeah, like when I had the full idea or for the main idea for the video. Then we planned like a month later to shoot that, that day. Um, and then we spent a whole day just shooting in the van. I was playing and shit. That way I wouldn't have to ha- bring the, the band out every day to do anything else. So then from then on, I was just me- uh, meeting up with friends and just shooting all the extra stuff. So all the stuff of like the van out, like all the shots of the van from outside, there's nobody inside playing. Yep. And you could probably tell if you look and, and whatever, look for it, yep. but it doesn't matter. Like there's tents, like yeah. it, it, it does the trick. Um, so like, for a month straight, I think it took a month straight after we've shot that first day, a month or two. For the rest of that summer, this was like two summers ago, um, we spent that whole two months just any nice day there was just trying to get uh, footage for that. And like one of the shots, my buddy uh, doing the ollie, or he does like an indie grab over the uh, the garbage and shit. Yep. We shot that one day and it was cloudy. Like we were waiting for the sun all day. Like right when we got it all set up, like the sun was out and then it, a cloud went over and we shot it anyway and it didn't fit at all. So I was like, and that was the one thing that was bothering me. The whole video was perfect. And that one shot was just cloudy yep. and like was blue. Like all the shadows are blue and I couldn't, whatever. Um, we go back to shoot it again. And again, it wasn't sunny, but it was just a cl- like a thin layer of clouds. So there was no like shadows, but it was like, mm-hmm. it was still lit. We ended up shooting it, ended up coming out good, and I ended up color correcting everything. I made the sky blue, and then I made it more like yellow to look like it was a sunny day. Yeah. But if you go and you watch that shot, you can tell now compared to the other clips that it wasn't a really blue sunny day, but it fits That's now. Funny. That's funny. I caught that the van was empty, which also is like logically, it's like, of course the van was empty. Like it'd be crazy to do not, <laughs> it'd be crazy to keep the van, the band in there longer than they have to be. Uh, but like I didn't catch the the other one. I didn't catch the sky and all that catch. So yeah, yeah. You fooled me with that one, which I oh, think cool. is nice of like, yeah, it worked out well enough that, yeah, I didn't catch it at all. And I think I'm cynical enough that I'm always looking at like, oh, what did they miss? Because I, I don't know how it's made, right? And I think yeah. part of understanding how it's made is figuring out where the imperfections are. And it's like, oh, mm-hmm. then I would have been known it was filmed over a couple of days, but I assumed it was oh, all one day. No, you know, yeah. Well, yeah, it's yeah. supposed to seem like it's all one course, day, yeah, you know, yeah. of course. But uh, yeah, it took like a month and a half or something of just trying to get everyone together to get all the shots I needed Damn. of like the van outside. So like, you know, like a whole day was just spent driving the van and then filming it from the outside from multiple angles and shit. And then like each day we just like filled in gaps of what, mm-hmm. what part of the song I needed filled in. And then we just like put in little narrative things like 
just people reacting to the van. Yeah. Like the uh, my my buddy from the skate park and his kid, like he's like covering his ears and shit. <laughs> yeah. Like that was like one of the the ideas that I thought would be hard. Like every time I'm coming up with videos, I'm like, how am I gonna shoot this stuff? And yeah. I end up figuring it out somehow. Like that's the fun part. Yep. Like uh, with yep. our sh- video for Joyride, like I was like, we need to like blow up or crash or do something somehow. I'm like, how am I gonna get this to work out? And then uh, then I thought of us getting hit by the train. Mm-hmm. And then when I thought of it in my head i'm like oh i could easily make that work and then yep. we, we pulled it off and so, it happens yeah you know just stuff like that i kind of most of the time we're improvising all of our stuff like i'll get a major idea and then i'll just like build parts around that depending on the video okay like with dyslexic i plan that whole thing out beforehand or whatever or certain ones like that mm-hmm. i'll plan the whole video before we even go shoot it if it's something i can get done in a day but like most of like joyride and and best days those videos were pretty much very similar to where we spent a whole day shooting with the band in the car or the band in the van. And then after that, I went and just filmed it in with that extra shit. Or we got together again and, and filmed more stuff or whatever, you know? That's such a long production process. Which seems, like To me, it's like I do most of my filming in a day or two. And if we absolutely yeah. need to, we'll do one day this weekend and one day next weekend or Well, something. if you're being but, hired by somebody, ideally, that's what you want to do. Yeah, you're getting, a month and a half is nuts. Yeah, that's what I'm that's saying. It's like if, Hollywood movies. <laughs> it is, yeah. Not that's Hollywood, what I kind of yeah. try to put into all these videos. You know what I mean? They've... I, we try to outdo ourselves each one. Yeah. That's why we've been like doing them on a film, like the past two of them or whatever yeah. uh, we did on film. And then we did a uh, slingshot that was not on film. But uh, anyway, we just try to like, you know, outdo ourselves every time by adding more narrative or more, just making it more professional. Like with slingshot, there's not a single thing in that video that I, that is wrong, that is messed up, except for maybe like the camera shifted like one degree on the tripod between mm-hmm. two shots that were supposed to just be like, a, Sta- a static change yeah. or whatever other than that every little shot every little piece of that video is like perfect and half oh, of it yeah. the, the back half of it was literally just me handing my camera to to people at our show yep. and filming like a live set and and it ended up looking like we staged it yep. or it looked like it looked like exactly how you would expect it to look like in a movie or whatever but movies would stage that shit and it was actually a real party that we just shot and it came out looking like, you know, really, really sick. That's incredible. Yeah. 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 I love all the house shows. I love the skate park shows. It feels like there's a, yeah, a really fun variety of shows you guys are doing where, yeah, it's all, it's all for fun. It goes back mm-hmm. to this thing of like, even, yeah, everything you guys do seems like it's more fun. Yeah. No, it's, we definitely have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. And yeah, we've just been on a roll this past year, uh, selling out like, well, selling out. Sure. We've just been having packed shows mm-hmm. for the past year, uh, locally. And then all of our out of state shows have been been great they've been like shows we used to be stoked about a year or two ago locally you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. like yeah we've been doing good it's been a lot of fun now like yes. it was always fun and it was always for fun but now we're finally enjoying really enjoying it because mm-hmm. like how can you not you know when we have like a fucking a full there was like 150 people at the skate park all moshing and shit mm-hmm. that shit was so sick um and that was after us putting on skate park shows for years where yep. it would be us playing on the dirt for the 20 people that were there every day just skating. Yeah. That, that's my local park. Like, I go there and, and I fucking skate there every day. So, like, during COVID, there was nowhere f- for us to play. So, there would be, like, 20 or 30 people there every day just because there's nothing else to do. So, I, that I was like, let's start playing here. That's so smart. And, yeah. So yeah. It started off just us playing and then adding other bands as it went on. And it started to grow and grow, especially during COVID when there was nothing to do. Like, yep. one of the last shows we did towards the end of COVID was – really dope for the time you know there was like 100 people there it wasn't a crowd in front of us but there was 100 people at the skate park yep. which felt like insane we're like oh there's all these people listening to our music and shit yep. and now that we put out this album and our live shows have become what they are we finally did a skate park show this this is the first one this year like mm-hmm. a week or so ago yep and that show was packed it was like there was a couple hundred people there and also they were all at the stage singing the songs moshing fucking everything you would expect like you know, it was, it, it was looked awesome. so sick. I've actually, uh, I was hoping to go to that show and then I had something else pop up and I wasn't able to make it, but I've always wanted to go to a skate park show. And it's shocking to me at this point in my yeah show going life. I still haven't made it out to one. So I'm, I have these next two on the calendar, but it yeah, seems the like next one, next one should be even bigger or at least that's the plan. Yep. Um, we're going to get like the city involved more and like, they're going to be promoting on like PLR and shit or whatever. Oh, yes. So a lot more normies and randos will be there plus our crowd. So yep. it'll be sick. That's awesome. That was my other question. It's like, yeah, uh, with the house shows and the skate park shows, it seems like there's a, a huge liability involved. And like, I, I hate to have to think about that, but it's like, yeah, in the house, there's only so many people that can be in there safely. At a certain point, you're <laughs> asking for problems. And skate park is a similar thing of like, it seems like a disaster. So to getting the city involved, feels like a really huge, like growing step there of like, we're well, not. Oh, like, well, we've gotten permits and uh, the past like four or so skate parks have done. We've gotten a permit for each one. Perfect. Okay. Um, but okay. this time in the city, like the mayor showed up last week or whenever we did it, I think it was two weeks ago. And he just randomly showed up and like came and like said some shit on the, on the mic. 
I didn't even know it was the mayor either because he like said some shit. And then I walked up and I was like, I introduced myself to him. And then he's like, oh, this is Jimmy. He's on the committee. And I'm like, yeah, I'm on the small wiener committee. <laughs> and then I'm like, he walked up the stage. I'm like, who the fuck was that guy? And then someone later on told me like, yeah, that was the mayor. And I'm like, oh, fuck him. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. But uh, he ended up showing up. Good, good guy. <laughs> and uh, so I think he's going to be more involved in the next one and actually like show up again. Good for that guy. To be yeah. Good. I was the point where it seems like it'd be a really easy thing for a mayor to be like, this is trouble for the community. Yeah. But it's like, no, these are kids having fun in a healthy sense. Well, it's way. Milford, like, dude. There's not like... Like a, it's not a bad community. So yeah. I mean, like if it was a worse city, maybe if it, I don't know, like sure. there could be more, more things to worry about. Sure. Um, and yeah, everyone, everyone behaved. There was no fights, so it didn't turn into anything bad. Yeah. And yeah, it can don't. It's only up from here, I guess. Absolutely, <laughs> that rules, dude. Hell yes. I also need to ask about the. We talked about the album art, <laughs> of course. The shit on the album art is incredible it feels like you've made poop for like 10 different projects at this point where there's the album cart cover uh what was the other one that i had here uh what's what's the, poop jug? The, the shoelaces the poop jug uh, it seems like yeah this is your thing at this point is oh yeah there's poop. poop in that video the shoelace video you're yes. saying yeah yep. yeah i don't know yeah poop's funny it's like the <laughs> one of the funny things you could joke about that doesn't like offend people sure. everyone's so like offended nowadays yes. yep. that it's hard to joke about anything that used to be funny when i was younger yeah you know what I mean? Except yeah. for poop shit. <laughs> poop and shit. You know what I'm saying? Fucking winkies and fucking <laughs> pee pit. Wee whiz. You know what I'm saying? All that some, shit's funny. <laughs> I had some comedians on uh, a couple episodes ago, and there was like a 22-minute chunk on farts only. And I was like, I don't know what my show became. I don't know how I've gotten into this. And now two weeks later, we're talking about making fake shit with someone. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm on a trajectory here, and I don't quite know how Well, that's that the thing is we made, I made a video with uh, like this poop jug, and yes. it got a million fucking views. Unbelievable. I yeah. don't know why or yeah. how. Like, Actually, I do. Like Right when I filmed the video, I was like, well, that's going to go viral. Yeah. Like right when I made it. It's so short and so yeah. digestible. You, the second you see the first frame, you're like, what the fuck? And then yeah, it's yeah. 13 seconds, so it's the perfect length to make you watch all the way. Yeah, it's, and it's funny because I made the poop jug not for that video. I oh, made it for I just assume... like a like a promo video. It was just a video of me standing in front of the van being like, yo, we got a show this day and this day yeah. and blah, blah. And I just threw a joke in there where I was like, people are asking us, uh, how good is the van on gas? Well, we converted it to run on poop. <laughs> so we just keep this thing around and we're good. And uh, it, it had like, like a fucking... Uh, to, like a toilet paper like stuck to it yeah, and shit yep. and so that was the original video and then when i like i just had it sitting in my room for a couple of days actually it's still sitting in my room but uh, it's just like nutella and milk or something yeah it's literally just like chocolate syrup yeah and there's no milk in there it's just chocolate syrup that's okay. all it is but anyway um uh i had it just sit in my room and i'm looking at it and i just thought of that joke like i'm like yo anyone tell me why my <laughs> poop jug smells like i got the lid on or whatever or yeah whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. and that shit fucking uh went viral like that day or, you know, with the, within the course of a couple of days. That's nuts. And I'm like, dude, out of all the fucking small video, like short videos I made, it had to be the poop jug. It has nothing <laughs> to do with our band. There's no music in it. Yep. But all right, whatever. If anybody stops and looks at our band, then thank you. That's uh, the internet. You yep. know? Yeah. So I ended up making another video about that too, where I was like, hey, we're scooped up and you might know us from that poop jug video that got a million views or whatever. And just like a whole like little thing about yep. that. So, so it, it caused more content. Yeah. I even tried to make a sequel where I was like, yo, who... Someone left their poop jug at the skate park, and then I go and, like, point to where it was, and my whole hand was covered in shit, and, uh, like, at the last frame. I thought that would go viral, and it didn't. It just got the normal amount of likes. So unpredictable, yeah. yeah. That's so funny. So, yeah, you, you, know, you never know. You seem to be busy with, like, I called them, like, yeah, shit posting videos, and I guess in this current conversation, calling them shit posts is even more on the nose than Oh, usual. especially with, yeah, with the but, runs, they were literal <laughs> shit posts, because that's another thing is I'm glad we went with the runs, because it just opened up the possibility for so many jokes to be made about mm -hmm. just all I had to do is just think of another thing to do with poop and music. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I should, I can make a video right now, just taking two turds and like putting them in my ear and it plays our music. Yeah. I'll just write that right down. I'm going to make that later. There but, we go. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that'd be funny. Some shit like that. You heard it here first. Folks. You'll see on the scooped up Instagram soon enough. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but, nuts. but yeah, like, so like, the funny thing with the runs actually is uh, for the longest time we we're like, I had that idea for like the, the cover and the name yeah. for like, couple months or no maybe even a couple of years wow, okay. and i was like you know we'll use that for like an ep or something but like for this new album it's got to be like a big statement mm -hmm. like we gotta fucking do something like really sick and really dope and serious and so like we were like thinking for mad long trying to give ourselves mad time to like come up with this awesome sick album name yep and we just never did so like <laughs> we ended up, <laughs> so we ended yep. up just going with the runs like one day we were just like all right everything is counting on the name of the album and the, the cover because we yep. need to like we were about to put out our song shoelace mm -hmm. and with that we needed to be like uh shoelace the third single off of or whatever fourth single off of our new album uh name here 
coming out this date. So it was all come, like riding on that. And so we were like, you know what? Let's go shoot the cover and see how it like comes out. Because I had that cover in my head, like the exact thing and shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, let's go shoot the cover, see what, or it was actually Jesse's idea to go and uh, try to just shoot the cover and see what it looks like and then decide on if we want to go with the runs. And when we shot the cover and it came out perfect, I was just like, all right, that's it. Fuck it. It's done, yeah. And we, we're known for having like joke songs and there's no joke songs on this album. So we just made the album a joke. Yep. You know? And so there's a bunch of little jokes in like the booklet and shit and like yes. the baseball cards have a bunch of funny shit. And so there's a lot of jokes packed in there with the runs. And it's and really it's like a fun, it. it's kind of like a play on words with like, since it's the baseball themed, it'd be like home runs, uh, but also like runs, like he's got shit coming yeah. out of his pants. So, <laughs> I think yeah. it leans pretty heavily towards one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's well, nice to qualify. With like at first, contract. like you won't think, until you see the shit, you won't know like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like it yeah. doesn't click at first. I remember someone being like, yo, I just noticed the shit. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's been out for two months. <laughs> I loved, uh, I watched like a little behind the scenes videos posted of making the album art. And it's, yeah, you seeing at the plate and putting the, the gloop <laughs> down your pant leg and all. What I love the most about watching it is <laughs> trying to get a vision of like the person driving by, of, like the mom with her kid in the backseat driving by and looking at you guys and being like, what the fuck is happening here? These guys and, covered in poop. Yeah. <laughs> on the baseball field. I, never, I haven't thought about that actually, but yeah. When I'm filming, there's so many times or like normally, or like I was telling you a story. Uh, I did a video for Half Hearted that was called Insatiable, uh, and it's all like a, a Bonnie and Clyde like crime theme. So I got mm-hmm. like a lot of like airsoft guns that I spray painted them black, and like we wanted them to look real, but it's like I don't want to have real guns on set. And we were filming a scene at the mall up the road because we needed a place uh, where like the cops come up, and that was yeah the perfect place to make that happen. And again, it's like I can't be at a at a mall, I can't be at a public place here playing with guns. Like that's just asking for so many layers of yeah. trouble. So I feel like I always have a thought in my head of like, what does this look like from the outside? And am I fucking someone's day up? Uh, and uh, yeah, other other versions that come true. I Stuff like that, I think you need like a sign that says like not real, like, uh, or, you know, uh, filming in progress type shit. Some version of that is ideal. But I also don't want to draw attention to us because, yeah, we weren't filming with permits at that time. So I don't want to put a sign that says filming and then get caught because of the si- Yeah, yeah, no, I, I feel that. I'm like, always gorilla uh, doing my I shit. I built a coffin for a music video. Uh, and I built it down here and it was, yeah, plywood with some spray foam on the inside that we then carved out and like painted gray and added some fake leaves. And yeah, it came together as like a stone coffin. But then it was like, now I have a coffin in my basement, which one was hilarious. My roommate came home one day and goes, hey, Peter, why is there a coffin downstairs? I was like, <laughs> oh, my bad, dude. But then it was like, how do I throw this thing away? I can't just leave a coffin by the dumpster. It was made like, of wood? Uh, it was. It was wood, spray foam, uh, and yeah, some paint and whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I ended up like taking it apart piece by piece. I ended up sleeping it up. in it. You know what I'm saying? Now I, you know, I got I a fucking <laughs> non-garlic diet. It's all good. <laughs> Non-garlic. So yeah. Um, I was 100 percent yeah. But the same thing. Just like take it apart piece by piece, throw it out. I can't put a coffin out there and ruin someone's day. Uh, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Make someone ask questions. So yeah, when I saw the poop on the leg, it was like. God, driving past that would have been such an adventure. I'm sure. I'm sure no one really even saw it. We got it done, done quick. I know. You know. Yeah. I'm glad I got that behind the scenes footage because, like, we just randomly filmed that. Yeah. Like, when the album came out or when it was coming out, I ended up just like scraping my phone of anything related to what we were doing. I like, and I wish we filmed more. Like, yeah. but like, I ended up putting together a good chunk of like behind the scenes for each music 100%. video and like us, you know, doing that, the cover and shit. So I'm glad I got that footage of us doing that because it was a funny moment and just like weird too, just like having all this shit. Yeah. And it all comes down to this, <laughs> this exact picture and this per- this one you know <laughs> moment that is now, ho- hopefully iconic one day. Absolutely, yeah. You know no, it saying? seems like the perfect example of like we thought we knew what we were doing and then you got there and I can imagine there's a moment where you're sitting there with a thing in your leg and going like, well, I guess I just gotta start scooping now. I don't. <laughs> where yeah, it would all been planned out, calculated in your brain, and then you get there and it's like. I guess I didn't quite have as all inside as I thought I did. I'm glad that it worked out to where this image was able to even work with the lens I had. Because yep. I didn't even, like, think about that until I got there. And I was like, all right, it works. Good. Because, like, this was in my head of, like, just the, the legs and seeing through the legs and mm-hmm. seeing the, the picture or whatever. If for whatever reason the lens was just, yeah, like, yeah. not the right lens, yeah. it wouldn't work out like that. If it was a fish eye or 85. Or, yeah. Yeah, like, this would be, he would be too, like, out of focus or right. whatever. Or, like, just the, the perspective. Yeah, exactly. Yep. yep. So, like, I don't, it ended up working out really well. That's so funny. Yeah. A lot it, of things, like, in this band kind of fell into place. Like, even the name of the band kind of just fell into place with just, like, we were trying to think of things that we're already like familiar, like a saying that someone already uses or whatever. And that's where we landed on scooped up. And when it wasn't taken, we were like, Oh, that's it. Yeah. You know, somehow it just like fit the vibe, like perfectly too, for what we were trying to do. Can I ask, were there any like other contenders at the time? Was there anything that you thought (laughs) it was going to be before scooped up? Uh, yeah, there was like skump. Okay. 
but that would end up being like already a band or some shit. Yeah. And then <laughs> a Call of Duty guy named Scum, but I guess you spelled it. Is there? Yeah, I don't There's know. A huge, famous Call of Duty pro, and of course that. Yeah, revealing my own nerd there. There was <laughs> no yeah. actual other ideas. It, Scoop Dub was the idea. Yeah. And then that was it. But yeah, for the for the album name though, we were almost gonna do. Uh, so our first album was Dumbass. We were gonna call it Dumbass again. <laughs> Like both words, dumbass and again. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I thought that would be funny. Yeah. But uh, uh, and there was a couple other ones. There was like Al's bum, okay. which is like that was Jesse's idea. Which is uh, it's like just album, but like Al's bum. I don't sure. Know. It, 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 yeah. It yeah. They were nothing very uh, worth doing. And then you know we just stuck with the runs. Yeah. And, and now we've been running with it, <laughs> and it made for a, a great campaign. You know what I mean? I could still make videos like. It's almost a year out since we put it out, and I could still make stupid videos about it, you know? Yeah, and you're right that it is this perfect, like, safe space, whereas, yeah, as the social climate continues to change, it's like, that's one that's hard to imagine going out of fashion anytime Where someone's going to be like, cancel anybody who made poop jokes. Yep. They're secretly, uh, <laughs> you know, racist. Yeah. So, I don't know, somehow. Somehow, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, it is a perfect safe one. I also know, uh, so this was also taken on film. Or was this done digitally and then done to create look like film? Yeah, this was shot on film, and then um, and then I digitally altered like the 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 colors and shit. Mm -hmm. This we're actually pissed about how the CDs came out. If you look at the CD, it's a lot darker. All the colors and everything is a lot darker than sure. it should be. Okay. If you look at it uh, compared to like on streaming or on like the vinyl, it's funny. The vinyl came out a little bit lighter. Interesting. There's yeah. no like perfect. So is, yeah. If you look at it on streaming, it's how I wanted it to be look be okay. be seen. Did, yeah, um, but. It's still, uh, so I, I made like the, the dirt, I made the dirt that color and I made like the sky that blue and like, you know, I went in and painted shit. Like the pants were like, if you zoomed in, there was a bunch of noise. Like they weren't this blue. There was yeah. like a ton of like reds and greens and shit. Mm -hmm. So I turned them black and white and then I painted them the blue that you see. That so a lot of this trick, stuff, yeah, yeah a, lot, yep. a lot of the colors I just, uh, enhanced in that sense. But yeah, it was shot on, on 35 millimeter, uh, film mm -hmm. and then, uh, which is what we do. Uh, so I took a film class when I was in college, and then I just fell in love with with film. Wondering, yeah, you said you did a lot of the music videos on film, and like it sounds cool. I think for my workflow, it's always made more sense to do it digitally and then make it look vintage or filmy if I want to. Well, the thing but is, you could never actually capture. You can't get perfect. Yeah, yeah. you can't create uh, the same look and feel that you get out of film digitally. Like right. you could try to, you, and, you, and you can get as close as I want, but it's never the same. You yeah. can get close enough to where like the the average viewer won't care, but like. Me as a huge film buff, sure. like yeah. um, I'll notice, like I'll, I'll be like, nah, 100%. that grain's not real or whatever, like 100%. or the colors. You could just tell a lot with uh, when you shoot on sixty millimeter film or thirty five millimeter film. I've never shot on th motion picture thirty five, but uh, I've done sixteen. The colors, like what's sick about it is you could just like you could turn the saturation all the way up, and the skin tones don't get all red, and like all the huh. all the colors just are in their own. There, they don't. There's no. There's not as much like noise, and and they don't like. I don't know. It's just you can enhance it and get such a greater look, and there's so much uh, leeway yep. on on film than there is digitally. <laughs> I'm um, screaming down here. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's because like each piece of grain is capturing the light, so each piece yep. of grain is capturing that light and, and color and everything, as opposed to like a square pixel, which yep. is going to capture like multiple spectrums of light and color and like noise and all that shit. So it's got a, a different look. And you're actually ca capturing like what is really in front of the camera compared to like a digital camera yep. recreating it. Yep. So that's kind of what I like about film. It feels like magic, and 100%. like, yeah, it just it breeds such like a light, a life to it that you just can't get digitally. There's a you touched on one of my favorite little like video fun facts is like by the year like three thousand when we're like looking back at old movies, like stuff from before the digital era will look better than the stuff from like two thousand to twenty five hundred or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like we can go and upscale the old film. We can't upscale two thousands. Digital, digital movie, yeah, like you're just right. Just gonna look like shit. Yeah, and so there's gonna be a weird thing at some point in the future where the older stuff will look better than the the more recent stuff. And I'm yeah. sure, like, yeah, if it's three thousand talking about like by 2700, they'll figure it out and make it good. But like, there will be a little dip there. And it's exactly that of like, yeah, digital is great. It has a lot of great assets, but it just doesn't quite have mm -hmm. the the maneuverability that yeah. film will always. Yeah, have. yeah, because with film, like, in case anyone doesn't know, uh, with film negatives, you could rescan those at four. Like right now, 4K is like the going is yep. the the industry standard. Once there's 8K and 20K down the line, they'll still be able to scan those gr the exactly. the film. The grain will get bigger, but it'll still be very like I'm not sure what they say. I forget what it is, but um, there's a certain limit you can stretch the film until like the grain will just be like kind of annoying. Too but like big, yeah. it's we we haven't hit it yet. Not you know close, what I mean? Yeah, yeah like there's so yep. much 
information in the in the negatives of film grains that like that's what why you're saying like you can't uh take a digital video yeah. that was just done in standard hd and bring it to 4k without like ai help mm -hmm. and without it looking all Sorry. clay yeah and shit you know i guess the ai is probably gonna get better than i appreciate and maybe this whole thing will be a null point because yeah mm -hmm. AI will be the the deep Jesus Christ, the mitigating factor there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I went. You, King, but I, I right now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I took like a black and white film class in, in uh, college, and then you know that's where you, I learned to do like uh, uh, developing the film and like putting it in like all that shit yep. and like blowing it up and printing it and stuff. And that's where I got my love for film. And then I started uh, once I uh, got out of college, I just started shooting everything for Scooped Up on color film. And then, uh, like, I don't, I don't uh, develop it myself anymore. But okay. uh, I go to Milford Philly and have them do it. Yep. But the the thing is, like, with with all the pictures that we do on film, it's, it has like a timeless look to it. Where mm -hmm. all the stuff we did in 2018 and 2016 still looks really good, and you can't really tell what year it was. Yep. But if we took a picture with like a digital camera from tw you know 2014, and now we're in 2024, you could tell yep. that it was like 100 a digital. You know, it was from that year. Yep. So like, I just like that. That's what I like about film is everything all the album covers that we grew up looking at, all like the promo shit that we looked at growing up that is like iconic mm -hmm. and timeless, all was shot on film. Yep. So it's an easy way to just get an iconic, timeless look with all your artwork. So yeah, that's why uh, all of our artwork, every album cover is shot on film, every like, anytime that we can help it, if we're doing like a promo thing where we're like uh, just doing like a photo shoot, that's all shot on film. Mm -hmm. And then now I've, finally made two music videos on film and that just took like a lot of that's wild yeah. a lot of build up and getting like buying the camera and then i did a short film to like practice and know that i could even capture the film right you know what i mean because when you're filming it you don't even know if you're getting the, the shit until you've gotten the film back so like spending all this money and filming all this stuff on a whole music video and not getting any of it back would have sucked which actually happened uh to I'm me sure it has yeah for Please tell me that story. Yeah. For Slingshot, actually, our newest video, um, all the party footage, yep. I had um, a buddy use my uh, Canon cinema camera, which is all the footage we have is just from that camera. But I also had a buddy of mine shoot a whole, I gave him my 16 millimeter camera and he shot a whole roll of 16. <clears throat> but I was, uh, there was so much going on and I was getting ready to play and everything that I, uh, when you when you set the Bolex, you have to, uh, you have to open the aperture all the way to even see through it because mm -hmm. the the viewfinder is split with a prism so you're looking at the light that's coming through the uh the lens or whatever okay so like if you're going to shoot in if you're going to close the aperture for your actual shot you have to close it after you've set the shot and so i forgot to do that and so the aperture was open all the way or vice versa whatever it is sure. and all the footage came out just black like there was it was it's all out of it was all underexposed yeah. And um, so that was a waste of like 300 bucks. I also shot like oh, two heartbreaking. two rolls of eight millimeter film too. So that was all the same thing. Uh, uh, my <laughs> equivalent to this is like with Unreal Engine. I'll render something, but that, that's uh, uh, whatever, a 12 hour render. And then I get it. And like, I just did one where I'm uh, in Unreal Engine. Like you have to put in like uh, planes for people and you put the green screen PNG sequence like on that plane. Uh, and if you don't do it right, then you just end up with a plane in the image. So just like a gray looking box where a person's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, do the render and get back and look and it's like, oh fuck, there's some gray boxes in here. Oh, uh, you to. To me, it's like, it's a 12 hour thing. I'll just do it again overnight. Like it's not a $300, get everyone back here. Do the whole, yeah. It's oh, yeah, we couldn't a, even do it again, yeah. Exactly, yeah. To me, it's like, I can just, okay, no problem. Tonight, <laughs> I'll just fix this, and it's not really a thing. It's it's a very annoying moment right now, but it's fine. Yours isn't quite fine. <laughs> yeah, well, luckily, I was shooting that video, the rest of the video on on uh, digitally. Okay. I was kind of going to do, like, a mix of half film, half digital on that video, but I didn't get any of the film back, so I just shot it all digitally. And luckily, gotcha. I, like, covered my, at my shit and yep. had, like, two digital cameras filming it. Um, you mentioned the uh, Canon cinema camera. Is that the C200, C300? It's or? a C300 Mark III. Okay. I saw, yeah. uh, I watched the video from Shoreline Summerfest. Shout out TJ, you're the king. Uh, I watched some of that video and I saw that camera floating around and I was like, whose is that? Yeah. I, yeah. Feel like, I feel like it's a nice enough camera that I usually know the people who have cameras like that. So I'm surprised to see it floating around. Yeah. That's my uh, camera. I, yeah. I fucking dropped a ton of money during, yeah, absolutely, yeah. during like COVID time. Um, like just like help from like stimulus checks and shit like yep. that. Like, yep, yep, yep. And, uh, yeah, so I made that investment then, and it, it allowed us to, you know, have these, like, bring up the production in our videos and make it ourselves without having to rent a camera or, exactly. or pay anybody else, you know yep. what I mean? So we, we were trying, like, with the new album, we, the songs are so much better, and we are trying to bring up the production. Like, the production of the songs themselves have came up, so I was trying to make the production of our videos come up, too, and just make everything a lot easier. Because I could yep. shoot that thing with, I could shoot a 4K RAW, 
and not even really have to worry about getting the uh it's so much easier yeah, yeah i don't like literally just do it all in post you know what i'm saying <laughs> i gotta get a rough estimate of the uh of the exposure and everything and then that's it yeah you know um yeah and it looks great like all my promos i do on that yeah. even though like I, I barely put any time into the exposure or the the color correcting on on those like quick promos, but they still look great. They yeah. still look way better than an iPhone or like yeah. even just a um, an XLR or whatever, no, you yeah, know, or not an XLR, camera. what a DSLR, DSLR yeah, yeah. <laughs> an XLR cable. Same shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's way better than that? That is true. It also is true. That like XLR, XLR cables suck for video. <laughs> <laughs> Don't recommend. Yeah, not even 720p. They suck. Dude. Um. Uh, one little tangent that I have for you. Uh, as we were starting here, you mentioned that like the music, like learning drums, learning piano was tough because you just weren't a good academic student. And then we got talking about the graffiti and the art. And I assumed that your, all your art was self-taught. I think a moment ago you said that you were like leaving college at some point. And it, so is there like a graphic design degree somewhere in the mix here? Did yeah. you go to school for some art? But yeah, I, I was self-taught and everything. So like I, I picked up, I started graphic design when I was 12. Okay. My mom like uh, just got like a hacked version of Photoshop from her, uh, like she was working at a... Uh, I think it was at Pilot Pen where okay. she was working. Shout so, out, mom. Shout out, moms. And so the graphic design department, the, there was a cool dude that worked there. He gave her like a cracked version of Photoshop. She brought it home, and then I was just like learning how to fucking just edit shit. Yep. Because I was like back then, I like I was always the kid that had like a like a video camera and was shooting stupid videos with my friends mm -hmm. and shit. So that's like where my video background comes from is uh, <laughs> just shooting like skate videos or just like you know like jackass style videos. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? But yep. like when you're 12 and. Yep. Uh, um, it's and funny. When we were, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, when we were starting, you also asked me uh, how I got into cameras and if I was doing camera stuff. And I kind of said that uh, it's funny because as I look back, I keep finding like new day ones of when I got into camera stuff. Uh, and yeah. one of the ones you mentioned that you, when you triggered being tw yeah, 12 years old playing with Photoshop, uh, for me, I was like not quite jackass stuff, but it was one making like Call of Duty montages of myself of like using whatever camera I had to film the TV. And then yeah, dude, that. same. Um, and then, that's actually what got my start too is uh, yep. just playing uh, Halo 2 and playing same online shit. and yeah. fucking uh, making montages and shit. And then and before that, one of my buddies who's like, uh, it's like a high school friend. It's one of like the few like not music friends that I have now. And it feels like a really valuable person to be like someone who knew me before all this shit and doesn't give a fuck about what I do. And it's like, he just likes me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that friend one time was like, dude, do you remember when we were like eight and we were making soccer videos? And I was like, no, what the fuck? And it turns out that when I was eight years old, I had the great idea of like, oh, I'm doing all these cool soccer tricks. Let's film them and put them on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I keep finding these like earlier days of when yeah. I was getting into video. It's like, oh, okay. I've been doing this a lot longer than I realized. I thought it was like an 18 year old and above thing. It's like, nope, this has been something I've done kind of passively and accidentally. And it's yeah. funny you had a similar beginning. There. Well, art, art like spreads in so many different ways too. I mean, you could start off by just doodling as a kid yep. and that'll like spark your you know, a director yes. to, you to become a yeah, movie yeah. director or some shit. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, like same with me. Like I was, I was making like stop motion videos when I was a little kid too. Like Hell just yeah. like claymation and like Lego stop motion yep. and stuff. And so like, that's where I kind of first got into making videos is doing stop motion. Then I got like a, a video camera on one of my birthdays and I'd make stupid videos with my friends. And then I also got like a capture card and fucking recorded uh, yeah. like Halo 2 gameplay and yeah. made like montages and stuff. Back when YouTube like first started, yeah, I was yeah. like one of the first people like posting shit on YouTube and, and uh, posting my flip books. Like I made a bunch of flip books in school and shit. Hell yes, okay. And I would film that, whatever. So um, yeah, There's like a graphic design degree, I guess is the so. Oh yeah, uh, right so yeah, I ended up going to to college for graphic design, but I was literally like the second teacher in all my classes because I already knew it all. Mm -hmm. I was just going to get like the piece of paper, yep, and uh, which was fun because I also took a bunch of uh, other art classes and. I just spent all the time like working on the website for, at the time, just my website that just had my art on it and stuff. Yeah. And just like other fun little projects, like Scooped Up wasn't even a thing until a, like, until I was 21. So like a couple of years into college. And I went to Who's Town Community College and I went there for like, I, I went, did the bare minimum. So like two classes a semester and just like, it took me like four or five, I think like five years actually, just to get a uh, certificate. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you did so, it. Uh, yeah, you did it. yeah, I did it. But uh, that time was great because I just I spent all the time just making art or coming up with ideas for paintings I wanted to make, mm -hmm. or you know, uh, or just like designing logos for Scooped Up when it was like in its infancy and shit. And I kind of wish I had like I kind of want to take like an art class soon just to like have a place a structure to like come up with ideas and draw shit or whatever. But you know. It's funny after all the the challenges learning growing up that you're now being like I might want to go back to school. That's uh, yeah. I just like yeah. I like the structure of of school of yeah. some some parts of school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, see, the thing with me is like I've always coasted through school. I never uh, never like took notes and I never studied and I just like winged it. Yep. And like if I, 
I always like kick myself for it because like if I had applied myself like I do with the band, I probably could have fucking got a scholarship and you know who knows what I'd be doing. Sure. But who cares? Yeah. I spent all that time fucking drawing and making my you know talents what they are today. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, it, like, so instead of like taking notes, I would just be drawing and like soaking up the information or whatever. And then getting like, you yeah. know, C's and D's. But I got through it. You got know what I mean? Yeah, Never yeah. stayed back. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> got expelled once, but uh, for selling weed at school. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I went back, uh, or I went to fucking uh, Alt Ed and kept up. And I went back my senior year. Never like lost any time or whatever. Oh, yes. You know what I'm saying? So I got it done. Um. I'm assuming you get expelled in high school. I'm praying you were like a fourth grader because it's so much funnier to get kicked out of high I've school. I've actually got, I got expelled twice, actually. <laughs> okay. So I, got, so I got expelled uh, in seventh grade from uh, <laughs> from Catholic school. Okay. So I, went, I can see that happening. I went to Catholic school from uh, kindergarten to seven, halfway through seventh grade. Okay. And um, like I said, instead of uh, taking notes, I was doodling and drawing and shit. Mm -hmm. And at, at like 10 years old, what do you, what is a guy, what does a boy draw but, but guns and like fucking aliens, like ripping each other's heads off and just like, just like pretty like violent shit. Sure. And for like a, for a, a, uh, a Catholic school, I wasn't even Catholic. I was just going there cause my parents wanted me to go to like yeah, some, yeah, yeah. like a good school, I guess, yep. and not get picked on. And, um, not that I ever got picked on just cause like I was funny. I like literally never been bullied. So like, I think that was like probably the root of it. Like why I was put to Catholic school just like, and I ended up just liking it. Yeah. But anyway, they like freaked out when they saw all these drawings that were like violent and they thought that I was going to like shoot up the school or some shit. Sure. They like took pictures of it, sent it to the board of ed. I ended up getting expelled for that and then going to uh public school. And what was bullshit is they like, they, they were like, they had like executive orders to like throw out any of my drawings. Like what the fuck? Like really like a pro persecuted artist. Yeah, literally. 10. That's how I felt. Yo, <laughs> literally, I felt like a fucking Renaissance artist getting like beheaded because I went against the church. Like, which is a real. <laughs> which isn't that far off. From it's a happened. real thing. Yeah. That's a real thing yeah. that used to happen. Um, fucking, uh, and yeah, like so, that really stunted my growth as an artist. I'd say because you know, look at me now. I'm fucking. I'm not like a psycho. I wasn't gonna <laughs> shoot up the school. Like, are you kidding? I was literally just fucking drawing like, uh, like fucking. Uh, saw one like the movie mm -hmm. saw one I drew like a picture of like the saw and like the leg being sawed off and yeah. shit and like, oh they just thought I was like fucking psychotic but I was just a 10 year old boy or however age you are in 7th grade sure. just trying to draw cool things that I thought were cool and, yes. and shit playing Halo 2 and fucking drawing guns and shit you, uh, I, somewhere in there you mentioned like I, who knows what would have happened if I had applied myself like I do to the band and maybe I'd be somewhere uh, and I want to give you the same advice that someone gave me uh, on the podcast one of those comedians actually I had to say the same thing of like you know I was in school I had a real job and then I thought music videos were a good idea so I ended up here and he was like well you couldn't have been like clearly if you were supposed to have a real job you would fucking be there and like clearly the reason we're here right now is because that world was never going to fit us and like mm -hmm. it fits a lot of people it's great for a lot of people we're not wired for it. We're wired to be here yeah. <laughs> smoking weed on a Tuesday afternoon. That's true, yeah. <laughs> I've actually, the the week it is. I've actually never Saturday. worked a real job. Uh, really? Yeah, well, actually once. I worked at Kmart for like uh, two months uh, okay. seasonally, okay. like a seasonal position, and then sure. they uh, didn't pick me up afterwards. So yeah. like I got, I got like quiet fired, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> whatever. Um, but no, yeah, I've just been coasting on art and, yeah. and, and doing my thing for, for years and years. That's the goal. But yeah, I got expelled from high school fucking for having weed on me when they brought the dog in. Nice. Um, so that was the second time I got expelled. Nice. And uh, yeah, but I, I never got, I never missed it like fell a behind, year yeah, or fell did. behind or whatever. Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> I made it. That's all we got to be sometimes <laughs> is present and the rest will figure itself out. Yeah, I yeah. think it is like, yeah. And it all happened for a reason though, because like when I got expelled from high school, that's when I dove into graffiti art and mm -hmm. just like I had all this extra time because I was... I was home all day and I had to go to uh, to school from like 2.30 to 4.30, which is such a weird time in, of day. Okay. So I had all morning just doodling and drawing. Then I'd go to, to school for two hours just to keep uh, like up sure. with school. And uh, during that time, I just got super into drawing and, and painting and shit. And that like set the course of like wanting to live a more like far-fetched yeah. or live or just try to chase like a dream that was more far-fetched, which in the beginning was just art. And then it eventually turned into the band. Um, Which gave me the platform to make art, yeah. you know, that was actually going to get seen by more people. So yes. it all comes full, full circle. It's a beautiful story, and I'm wildly missing the point here. <laughs> but the part that resonates with me is, like, if you get <laughs> expelled from school, why are they giving you free time till 2 p.m.? Like, that seems like the worst thing to do with someone who's, like, 
if if they think you're on the edge. So. I just smoked way more pot <laughs> then, and I fucking just drew a lot. But yeah, I know for Which, sure. Like, worked out for you, but it's like if you were really, yeah, trying to do the weed game, really try to grow your weed business. That's like <laughs> that would be a great opportunity to do it. It seems so. It weird. was it's like the person who needs structure is the person you're expelling. Like, how are you gonna expel them and give them no structure? Like that seems like a a recipe for making the person you're expelling even more volatile than mm-hmm. they already are yeah uh, but it worked out for you so disclaimer this is over 10 years ago i've never touched weeds since <laughs> straight edge ever since every day ever since <laughs> <laughs> Hell yes, man. we are coming up here on our hour which has flown by we're doing great uh the one of the pieces that i want to touch on uh you said you were following warp tour and this i'm going back to the stickers here uh oh, it's one yeah, little yeah. note here that i think everything else we kind of weaved in organically and that's one that we didn't quite touch on uh, so it tells me there's a longevity of the band because I feel like Warped Tour ends in 18 or 19 or something like that. Yeah, I was going, I started going in like 2016 and promoting the band, and that's like when the band started. Okay. So as soon as the band started, I was going and just giving out free uh, CDs that I just burned like onto, you know, like whatever, like those yeah, yeah, yeah. CD ROMs and shit. So I like, started with that and then giving out stickers and stuff too. And each year I just grew and made more CDs and then gave out more stickers. And eventually I got into where like, there's this thing where you could just like work catering and like you go in and you, you like help them clean up uh, or you like volunteer to like help clean up after catering for like one hour uh, at each warp Tour event and you get in for free and you get backstage pass and like uh, you just do your hour and then yep. you get to, you know, follow the tour. And like if you do that as a band, they eventually put you on a stage. I didn't get to do that because I didn't have the rest of my band with me, but I was sure. going and following the, the warp Tour. That was the last year. Uh, that was in 2018. Um, our buddies in uh, Losing Streak which is a band from New Jersey, shout out Losing Streak. Uh, they're sick. And uh, they uh, like hooked me up with the catering lady and like was just like, oh yeah, this is Jimmy. He wants to fucking you know, do the catering thing and fucking. So like Warp Tour had like this built-in thing where you would work catering and you get in for free. And then you'd, they'd also have these like slushies that you can sell for $2 each and you just give them a dollar each for them. So you sell those, you get your gas money. That's why, that is so smart of them to build this. Yeah. Because there would have been a ton of people like you following the tour and mm-hmm. to give them a way to make that viable. It's so yeah. smart. And of course it's, it it's like a, labor it's a moving and, circus. Yeah. Like, yeah. so they have like all the, all the I'm shocked. I've never heard of this before. Yeah. Yeah. I so wish cool. I knew earlier because all you have to do is just show up early. There's no credentials. You just yep. say, yo, I'm working catering. And they just, they're like, all right, go on in. You don't even have to, you know I mean? They might find you later or some shit, but like, you don't get backstage pass unless you that's, actually go and do work. work that's the, catering. the the dark secret of any entertainment event that I've learned is like just show up at ten a.m. Yep. and walk in. No, one hundred percent. No one is until four p.m. No one's checking. Like yeah, as long yeah. as you're there early enough, everyone else will walk in. Is the same as you. That's true. Yeah, and it's kind of a horrific. I don't know. I'm, I think about security a lot at these events, and sometimes when like when security doesn't look through my bag, I'm like. I'm bringing in a lot of stuff here. It's kind of crazy for no one to check. And of course, when they check, I'm also kind of annoyed. Of like, listen, I'm going to bring my here. bombs next time. But now I know. Truly, <laughs> it, like, it feels like at 10 a.m. you can show up anywhere and bring anything. And yeah, yeah. Especially if you're holding like a ladder. A but it's already here. So. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> if you're wearing like a like a high vision vest and you're wearing, holding a ladder, you yeah. can get anywhere. Literally um, anywhere. And like by 6 p.m. they might ask questions. But show up at noon. Yeah. You're fine. Life's but, good. What was cool is like when you get backstage and stuff at Warp Tour, you're literally like sitting there and eating with all the, the big bands. Yeah. And yeah. you're like and i got to meet like kevin lyman like the guy who puts put it all together course, yep. and you know so that was awesome and i wish that i had the rest of my band i wish uh warp tour was still a thing because like we would have just went next year all as a band and mm-hmm. actually been able to play because he lets every band play on the small stage if you like show you're putting in the work Good you know me. after a couple yeah if you if you follow the warp tour and you're following for like a couple dates or you know i mean five six dates at least and then you know by the end he'll put you on if you do the whole thing obviously he'll put you on by the end um and that's like what losing streak was doing is they they started it from the beginning and they're put being put on uh the small stage or making their own little stage like with a canopy and playing mm-hmm. to everybody that was leaving so that was another thing i was doing is like playing songs to people that were leaving while giving i had like a big stack of stickers on the ground and stuff like that that's like where it all kind of started and then when warp tour went away i was just looking for anything like that that i could you know gain fans from yeah. and i went to when we were young for the first two years and did it there and and other big festivals and big shows. And now I just go to every show that's coming around. And like, like all the Green Day shows <clears throat> and the Blink shows were perfect because there was like thousands of people. Yeah. I was getting rid of thousands of stickers each night. So, you know, that has to do something. Yeah. And again, it's a numbers game, right? You can give out 10,000 stickers and like everyone's not going to look at it. But 10, 000, like if 1%, then that 1% yeah. is a much bigger piece than it was going to be at yeah, the skate park if you're giving out stickers there. Uh, was uh, Scooped Up then like your first band project? Yep. Damn. That, yeah, it I, feels like you were very like 
very action oriented from the beginning. I feel like a lot of people's first yeah. band is like a, a long feeling out process. And the second or third one is the one that you then follow warp tour and like put the time into. No, I just like, uh, I've, I just, I guess, uh, it was like my background in graffiti yeah. kind of like trying to get the name out there for, uh, like I just had like, how did you get a graffiti name out there? What was like, what, what, well, what other businesses had you business ideas, entities had you pursued before this? Like Grizz graffiti. It sounds like you, yeah. Put work into getting your name out there. Like was there an active process or did it just kind of happen? Well, yeah, it's like, well, that's what graffiti is, is you're just trying to get this name out there. And the name is just your graffiti name. It doesn't mean anything. But once I started making music and having a band, I was like, oh, I could use my background in graffiti to get this name out there. And it's actually something leads gotcha. to the music or whatever. So like, you know, the best way to do it is putting stickers up or mm -hmm. like, or, or I'll take, I got stencils and I fucking do scooped up all over in, in New York. I'll do it on the sidewalks and mm -hmm. shit. And, um, <clears throat> just like little things like that. And then there's just like with that mindset, I think made me more, uh, like ambitious to get the shit heard, I guess. I don't know. Um, so I just, I just picked up guitar at, at 21 and then I just started writing songs. Like I borrowed my buddy's guitar, just started learning songs and then writing songs. And then I started jamming with a buddy that was just as bad at drums that, as I was bad at guitar. And it kind of felt cool. And like, I'd never even planned on starting a band or whatever, but once I started playing with him, it just got fun. And then he like kind of fell off and didn't want to jam anymore. And I was like, all right, well, who do I know? Cause like now I have all these songs, like I want to start a band and shit. And then I, I remember my buddy, Jesse, who I've known for years from smoking weed and shit that, uh, he was like a prodigy drummer. Like in my head, he was like the, like the best drummer I probably fucking know. And he, he is. Um, but like, turned out you were right, but you yeah, didn't know it at the time. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I, in my head, like I was like, yo, that would be sweet to get to jam with him. And, um, uh, I ended up texting him and shit. I'm like, oh, yo, I forgot you were a drummer. I actually have some songs right. And I'm trying to start like this punk thing. And he's like, oh, I'm actually jamming with my buddy Walter, uh, tomorrow who's a, his, his buddy, who's a bass player. And, um, th that was our first bass player, Walter. Currently our, our bass player is, uh, Leo. Uh, at halfway through our first album, Walter ended up quitting the band. But anyway, I went, I went over to Jesse's house that next day and we just like jammed and it was, that was it. That was like history right there. Hell like, yes. um, he dug the songs and we just like having like this, prof both of them professional musicians, literally ready to go and being in a, in a touring band, having them like, to jam with got me to be such a better guitar player and such a better songwriter yeah. so much quicker than like I would have otherwise. Yeah. So like it kind of all fell into place. And then my whole plan was just to write songs that I could skate to. And then like the bar just fucking rose from there. And now we're eight years in and we're, you know, we're really, really doing some shit now. Hell yes. Really making some waves. It's beautiful to watch that grow. And yeah, it's cool that it came together so organically where, yeah, we, there's so many, so many bands that come together much less organically that it's nice when it happens the right way and it happens. For yeah. I think person. we just got it all right. Like you said, yeah. like, you know, some people it'll take their second band or whatever to actually like take it seriously. But mm -hmm. like I was 21, I was an adult. I had grown up seeing my friends in local bands and seeing like what they did that didn't really pan out how they should have yeah. or whatever. So I kind of had like an idea of like, if I was gonna do this, I'm gonna fucking do it. You know what I mean? I'm not just gonna half-ass this and just be in some some band that's yeah. not gonna do anything. If I'm yeah. gonna make music, cause like with like, I was so into graffiti and getting my name as just an artist and what that takes is so much that like, you know, it's almost the same as trying to make it as a musician, yeah. but in a completely different lane. Yep. So like, I just sh shifted all that thought and was like, if I'm gonna make music, I'm gonna do it to the fullest extent of, what I can perceive. Mm -hmm. And you know, like when I first picked up the guitar with the fullest extent was just recording a song and skating to it. Yep. And then once we like got tight, I was like, oh, well we should play shows. And you know, and then from there, like it was like, all right, well we need music videos and all, you know. Just scales on it its all, own. Yeah, it takes life on its own. Literally. Hell yes. I love that, man. We are at a great place to wrap up here. Uh, one last thing that I'd like to ask about uh, that I'm always curious with guests is what are you currently learning? So we talked a lot about like the past of Scooped Up and I'm curious, like we've done the stickers, we've done things to grow the band to this point. Like what is the next evolution? What is the, is it online marketing? Is it physical marketing? Is it better mixes, better movies, better videos? Like what is some, what is the next step? What is the thing you are currently trying to learn and improve upon to make Scooped Up into the next best thing? Um, I think just writing new songs, better okay. songs. Um, right now we have like two really dope songs that I'm stoked about. <clears throat> and I'm trying to just write more that are like, at that level of, so, of dopeness. Cause uh, this album took like multiple years, like four years to write and make. That's always so, hard about the follow up album, right? Is it the first one you can take all the time in the world and once it's out, a clock starts. Ticking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, um, so yeah, exactly. But, um, so like this took like some of these songs were like from 2019. So now I'm trying to just write songs that are really good and really 
now mm -hmm. and then try to put those out as soon as possible. Yeah. Like hopefully by the next year we'll have like a little project out, maybe an EP or we're definitely gonna have some singles out soon, but whether they fall on a, an album or an EP, we'll, we'll find out. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm learning every day, man. I don't know yeah. what I'm exactly I'm learning, but I'm learning something new every day. That's for sure. Yeah. Something about myself, something about other people. Hell yes. Just got to explore and do shit that like, you got to get out of your comfort zone. Cause like nobody, nobody was born knowing how to do anything. No one was born knowing how to, you know, make a podcast or, yeah. uh, I'm still learning, be a, we'll be get a there videographer day, yeah. or be a photographer or be in a band or whatever. You know what I mean? You're not born with any of these talents. You got to yeah. go and, and do it and learn it yeah. and make it happen for yourself. So if I can leave with any, um, any, good advice it's that pretty much just pick up something that you that you yeah. like and just fucking go full throttle into it and like more yeah. you got to go above and beyond always you know yeah. into your shit otherwise you know it's only going to pan out as much as it's gonna and i think I would, the one thing i would add to that is like and if you don't want to go above and beyond then it's not your shit and find something that makes you above and beyond worth yeah. it right like, you could have a couple things that you're into that you don't really you know if you yep. some people are different some people don't go above. they don't they want to live you know live a more laid back life and you could do yeah. multiple things to your extent and you know yeah. say like you know maybe raising a kid is is what you're meant to do you can go above and beyond about that you know yeah. so th it's all different for everybody but you know you just got to find your passion and fucking send it yeah and keep having fun while doing it. i think oh of I, course I, yeah again, if you ain't I, having fun you ain't doing it right 100 percent. <laughs> and i can't celebrate you guys for that enough where i think a band becomes business at a certain point and i think everything does become business eventually and i'm sure that there are moments where scooped up it has has to be business minded because that's part of the game but like mm -hmm the overall theme is not that. And I think that's so important. And I think it shows through. And I think that is the success that we see on the reels for you guys. I think that's where the growth comes from is everyone else being like, these guys are having so much fun. I want to have fun with them. Mm -hmm. Right. When I think everyone's saying it's too serious, it almost is like scary to new fans where it's like, Oh, I don't want to get involved in that. It's that's a lot going on over there. Yeah. No, when, but, when bands take themselves too seriously, it's like the, you know, there's too much that can go wrong. You know, if yeah. any, if they slip up and like, they just fucking, they get like their pants ripped. It's the end of the world. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. a serious ass fucking like metal band and they yep. turn around, their pants are ripped. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> like all credibility lost. But for yeah. us, dude, if I have ripped my pants, that's just adding to it. It's yeah. like, we don't take ourselves that yeah. seriously. Like we do like in, in our art, but we don't take ourselves right. as seriously when we're, you know, building up an image for ourselves. Like we don't have like this huge ego. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're trying to just show that we're just like everybody else. And, Yep. All my favorite bands are the same way like that. You know what I mean? Yep. When you could tell that it's just like, you know, a real person yes. there. They don't fucking think that they're, you know, above anybody or whatever. You know what I'm saying? 100%. Yeah, no, that was that was my thinking. That's my goal of the podcast, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's like I, I know that being a music video director means that I am in charge. I'm telling people what to do a lot of the time. And I know that is not an approachable, inviting figure. That is someone who has to be in charge because that is what I'm getting paid to do. Mm -hmm. But that's not really me. This is much more of my speed. And it's nice that I can flick into that director gear. But it's like, no, this is much more of me. And yeah, this is a nice way to share it with the world. And hopefully, yeah, get some more eyes on it. Mm -hmm. um, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Episode 78 of From Everyone, Jimmy Barbetti. Jimmy, where can people find you online? Where can they find Scooped Up online? Where do you want to send people? What should they watch? Give them everything. Uh, you can go to IBrokeMyDick.com. That's our website. There's no way. Yeah. I swear to God, if I type that in, it's not your website. <laughs> no, it's our website. Yeah, it goes to the Scooped Up website. You could also go to PoopedUp.com. That also works. Um, there's also <laughs> everything is fun, dude. I love it. Every <laughs> time I learn more, I love more. No, you got to read these uh, these these baseball cards. I there's some funny shit on there. We I also got MGKSucks.com. That that works <laughs> That's too. That's expensive one in this day and age. No, it, they all cost fourteen bucks a year. <laughs> um, but uh, you could also just go to ScoopedUpBand.com. That that works too. But um, <laughs> yeah, you can just Google Scooped Up. You can find us everywhere. Oh, yes. But yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, man. Of course. Appreciate you coming. Thanks for coming through. Episode 78. We did it, folks.